Hello, I'm George Teasdale with Engineered Air Balance. Today we're going to be discussing the procedures required for taking a pitot tube traverse in a round duct. Okay, so let's discuss the pitot tube. Here at the tip we have what's measuring the total pressure and this this is the end that gets placed directly in the airstream and the pitot tube uh, is con constructed with a tube inside of a tube such that the radial holes on, on the outer tube here are going to measure the static pressure. And so the total pressure, as we mentioned a second ago, runs through the inner tube uh, along this, along the pitot tube, and then the radial holes measure the static pressure again on the outside of the inner tube. Okay, so this end of the pitot tube, we again have our cutaway where the uh, inner tube here is the total pressure tube and it is connected to this this port here at the end and at this port this is uh, typically connected to the high side of the manometer. This radial uh, outer tube cutaway, um, again the outer tube, it, it runs to, to this port and this is typically connected to the low side of the manometer. Shown here are the different instruments that we're going to need to perform a pitot tube traverse. Featured here are multiple manometers from different manufacturers. We're also going to need pitot tube, a tape measure which will aid in measuring uh, the grid locations for the pitot tube and of course the ductwork itself. Okay, let's talk about velocity profiles in ductwork. Rarely is a velocity profile uniform in the ductwork. Typically, as the Airflow flows through the ductwork. It is higher velocity in the center and lower velocity at the edges due to friction. There's quite a few things that can change the characteristics of the velocity profile. Uh, this typically includes duct transitions, elbows, and proximity to fan inlets and discharge effects. So there's several important rules when picking a location for conducting a traverse. First of all, in order to maintain a location that's going to contain the best chances for uniform flow, a traverse plane should be located as far away from an upstream disturbance as possible, and ideally at least one diameter downstream from, an up, from a disturbance. A traverse plane is also suitable for flow measurements if the average velocity is greater than 1,000 feet a minute and no velocity pressure is negative or zero. Take traverse measurements at actual conditions in actual cubic feet per minute. If the traverse location occurs at a location that is not standard air conditions, a velocity correction may be required. When picking a location for traverses, ensure that the duct size does not change in that traversed section. Face the pitot tube into the airstream and parallel to the ductwork at each measurement point and measure the velocity pressure. Convert velocity pressure to feet per minute velocity before averaging if the traverse is taken at other than standard conditions. Based on recent ASHRAE research and our experiences, we recommend log Chebyshev, or also known as log T, for rectangular ducts and square ducts, and the log linear method for round ducts. For our next example, we will be performing a pitot tube traverse in a 12 inch circular duct. In order to mark our pitot tube, for this traverse, we will be using the log linear chart and method, which indicates 10 factors to multiply by the diameter of the ductwork. We'll begin with the first factor, which is a 0 0.019 multiplied by our 12 inch round duct, which turns out to be a quarter of an inch. The next factor is a 0 0.077, again multiplied by 12 inches, gives us seven-eighths of an inch. The third factor, a 0.153, is multiplied again by 12 inches and results in a one and seven-eighths inch measurement. Next is a 0.217 and that results in a two and five-eighths inch measurement. The fifth factor, 0 0.361, multiplied by 12 inches, results in 4 and 3 eighths. The following five measurements 
will be performed in much the same way using the last five factors of the log linear chart. So our next step is going to be utilizing the pitot tube and hooking up with the manometer. Okay, now we are going to connect our manometer to our pitot tube. Again, the manometer uh, is utilized here to accept the pressure from the, the, the total pressure port of the pitot tube and the static pressure port of the pitot tube. So let's go ahead and hook that up. We take our hose and ensure that we are nice and snug on our port here. And this, is our this becomes now our total pressure tube. And we'll ensure that it is hooked up to the positive side of our manometer. Next, we'll take this hose and connect it to our static pressure port of our pitot tube and ensure that it goes onto the low port of the manometer. And I want to stress here that the manometer is essentially taking a differential pressure between the total and the static. The velocity pressure is the result of that differential pressure, and the velocity pressure is the total pressure minus the static pressure. Here we can visually demonstrate the location of the pitot tube inside of a duct when performing a pitot tube traverse. We can visually see that the pitot tube must be oriented into the airstream. It must be perpendicular to the airstream in a cross-sectional plane. We do not want to see the pitot tube at an incorrect angle since that will produce erroneous readings and provide unacceptable data. It's also important that the pitot tube be gridded off and measurements taken in a consistent manner. For our next demonstration, we're going to perform our pitot tube traverse of our round ductwork. Marking the ductwork utilizing the log linear method requires a hole to be drilled at a 90 degree angle from each other. In this instance, we've drilled a hole at the top of the ductwork and on the side of the ductwork. Technicians in the field might find that the hole needs to be drilled at a 90 degree, maybe in a different location, such as the, the, the two tops of the ductwork. But again, for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and use the top and the side, making sure that our pitot tube is properly oriented in the side of the duct. Starting with number one, then number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number 9, and number 10, making sure that our pitot tube is properly oriented in the ductwork. We'll start with number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, number 8, number 9, and number 10. Again, we take a static pressure at our traverse location. We will remove the hose on the total pressure port of the pitot tube. At this point in time, we'll, we will record our reading. Okay, now that we have finished our pitot tube traverse, we need to ensure that every single velocity pressure is then converted into a velocity. That calculation is the square root of that velocity pressure times 4,005. This velocity then is calculated for each individual velocity point that was measured in the duct. Once we have that entire grid and we've made those conversions, we take the average of those readings. And in this particular traverse, the average velocity measured 2,340 feet per minute. Now in order to determine the airflow through the, through the circular duct, we multiply that average velocity times the area of the duct. Because this is a 12 inch circular duct, the area is 0 0.79, which is a pi r squared formula. The airflow then can be calculated as the area times the average velocity. So we take our 0.79 square feet times 2,340 feet per minute, and that results in 1,850 CFM. Thank you for joining us at the Engineer Air Balance Training Facility, and thank you for watching this video on demonstrating the procedures for pitot tube traverse. If you've liked this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel.
And if you'd like more information on our training facility or training materials, please contact training at eabcoinc.com.